I'm Katherine Brownstein. I'm assistant professor at Harvard Medical School, and I work with rare and orphan diseases, and I have a special interest in ATP1A3. I'm here at the symposium because we found one of the first patients that presented with childhood onset schizophrenia before alternating hemiplegia of childhood or any other um, known phenotype. So when we saw the de novo in ATP1A3, we actually were shocked because it seemed like a phenotypic expansion at that point. Um, now the psychiatric um, phenotypes associated with ATP1A3 are being quite well um, investigated. And uh, I think we've heard of personally around seven or eight more patients that have presented with psychiatric features um, even before motor ones or don't have motor features at all. What we're doing to help find a treatment is really try to figure out the breadth and depth of experience with ATP1A3. Um, with our hospital, we're very lucky that um, patients come from all over the world. And some patients, because this gene is so interesting, the phenotypes can vary so much, we can um, see what works for what patient. And then if we amass enough patients with enough experiences, we'll be able to go through and see um, treatments that work best or um, pharmaceuticals that work best or um, interventions that seem to work best. It's going to be a slow and steady process, but only by being at this hospital and by sequencing and having the data accessible and shareable and investigators from all over the world collaborating um, will actually get there, will actually find a treatment. This is a complete ongoing thing. So um, I work in juvenile onset psychosis and rare and orphan diseases and in SIDS. So um, ATP1A3 is a huge interest of mine, but we have a very mixed cohort where we have a lot of N of ones. Um, we discover a lot of genes. Um, I work also with the Manton Center for Orphan Disease Research where patients can self-refer. And if we don't have an expert in that gene or condition, we will match them with someone who is an expert. And there is a level of serendipity to all of this where, you know, we've made discoveries because they've had the patient's picture up on the TV screen and someone walks by and points and says, oh, I know what that is, you know, which is kind of exciting and kind of disturbing at the same time. Like, you don't want serendipity to be a major part of this, but yet it still is. Um, but I think by working together and collaborating and building these cohorts and sharing these cohorts will take the serendipity out of it and we'll soon we'll be able to use um, natural language processing and um, the wonderful techniques that are being described here at this conference um, and medical record review and parents, I think, are a completely underutilized resource in all of this. And only by having the parents completely phenotype their children and actually put in the little things that they might not think of while in the the medical interview, I mean, the medical um, clinic inter um, visit, um, will probably pick up on even more things.